I think we'd all like a definitive answer to this question. everyone, it's me, Steph the Alter Nerd, your nerdy alternative, and welcome to another dose of the Daily Nerd, where I break down the news and pop culture stories of the day that's pretty much got me eye. And oh my goodness, yes, I am going to tackle the question, how did Meghan Markle fool Prince Harry into marrying her? My opinion, conspiracy theory, whatever, mind you. Yes, if we look at their timeline, we actually might be able to get a few clues as to potentially the answer to that question. Again, my opinion, conspiracy theory, whatever, and get information that perhaps you guys actually don't know about. Now, before I jump into all the juicy who see details, there's a little bit of housekeeping. Firstly, YouTube human reviewer, I see you lurking. I'm not going to say any trigger words or anything that's going to offend your ear holes. And to everyone else awesome enough to have clicked on this video, hey up, how y'all doing? If you love this kind of news and pop culture on the daily, served with a little bit of sass and gobbiness, which is basically this, right? Do make sure you click on that subscribe button because in a couple of weeks' time, I will be reporting in London live at the coronation, so you will not want to miss that. Like, share, comment down below your opinion, conspiracy theories and whatever's. Also, as well, do send me a super thanks. It's just below this video right here. Let's have a conversation about it because it does guarantee a response from me. And, oh, yeah, let's jump into this one, shall we? And so it is another non-award-winning presentation by me, Steph the Alter Nerd. How Meghan Markle fooled Prince Harry to marry her. A complete timeline. Opinion, conspiracy theory, whatever. So here we go. It didn't actually start with Prince Harry. Oh, no. Now, in order to enter the royal circle, you actually need to know someone who knows someone who knows someone who knows someone who knows someone, right? Uh, for Meghan Markle, that someone was Violet von Westenholt. Now, she's a childhood friend of Prince Harry, who also worked at Ralph Lauren for public relations. Now, this is how Meghan got connected with Violet because they became friends through her work with Ralph Lauren. And so July 2016 happens, and this is not when Harry met Sally. Oh, no. As confirmed by Prince Harry in his book, it was their mutual friend, Violet von Westenholtz, who set him up with Meghan. After exchanging messages, they first met at Soho House's Dean Street townhouse in London whilst Meghan was in town to watch the Wimbledon tournament. And then later on that month, they have a second day. Now, the night before Meghan was due to leave London, she asked Prince Harry out on a second date. So she asked him out. Mm, oh, yeah, she would be suing as well, guys. In the Netflix mockumentary uh they shared this photo where they stay it was from their second day uh, this is where she gets her hooked into harry as he said the following about it quote that was when it just hit me okay this girl this woman is amazing is everything i've been looking for and she's so comfortable and so relaxed in my company they then in august 2016 the following month go on a third day but then they start going a little bit more international about this because Prince Harry takes Meghan to Botswana in Africa where they camped underneath the stars. Uh, in their Netflix mockumentary, Meghan said, quote, that summer was going to be on hiatus from work, but I had travel plans and a cast mate of mine has said, make sure you leave room for magic. Finding out that Meghan's hiatus was at the same time Harry had time off from his conservation work in Botswana, he then invites her and his reaction was she said yes. What? This woman that I've only met twice. She's coming to Botswana and we're going to be living in a tent for five days. Yeah. Not in a five-star hotel. Oh, no, 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 no. In a tent in the middle of Botswana in Africa for a third day. No. No, I don't even do glamping, guys. No, I I will freely admit I am a little bit on the bougie, bougie, bougie side when it comes to that stuff, all right? But 
A couple of months later, the rumors start in October 2016. Uh, by my research, it was the Sunday Times that was the first to report the Prince Harry had a new girlfriend and named her as Meghan Markle. Titled, as you can see here, His Majesty's Pleasure, Prince Harry secretly dating US TV star Meghan Markle with the tagline, Prince Harry is secretly dating a stunning US actress, model and human rights campaigner. It was reported that Prince Harry was extremely happy. The article went on to quote a source saying, quote, Meghan is a very confident and intelligent woman and she's not overawed mixing with royalty. That's one of the things Harry admires about her. Now notice, link in the description bar below. Read the article yourself. There is no racism or sexism towards Meghan whatsoever. Try and find it because I couldn't find it. Let me put it that way to you. Now, a month later, Prince Harry was seen in Toronto celebrating Halloween at Soho House there. The Mirror back in 2016 reported that to be a member of Soho House at that time, it cost nearly £1,700 per year with a £240 joining fee. However, it don't matter if you've got the money because you'd actually still need two of the existing members to vouch for you, to propose you, right? So it's handy that our Megsy had at least two friends at the time that could have done this for her. Firstly, Jessica Mulroney, which, uh, by the way, where is she now? You know, just asking for a friend, you know. And the second person, the wife, no less, of Canada's president, Sophie Trudeau. See, guys, sometimes it's not what you know, it is who you know. Uh, but the victim narrative was strong with our Megzi and Hazard from the star. On the 8th of November 2016, he released an appeal to the media in response to the, quote, harassment, sexism and racism Megzi had received. Harry asked for privacy. So right at the start, guys, you no idea. They were really starting with this victim narrative right at the start. We want our privacy and all that malarkey, right? Nice. Later on that month, though, a couple of days later, uh, from Prince Harry's appeal to the media, Meghan Markle is spotted on a shopping trip to the Whole Foods store on Kensington High Street. Now, this article that you can see here from the Daily Mail states the following, quote, Harry's late mother, Princess Diana, was a regular shopper on Kensington High Street and Kate, now known as Princess Catherine, from time to time, is seen browsing there, although always shadowed by an official car. So let's put it this way. Even though they plead for privacy, Meghan decides, right, to go out in public to somewhere that is known as a shopping place for Princess Catherine. So you know the media is going to be out there just on the off chance that they see the princess and they're able to take pictures. But it doesn't take a rocket scientist, or dare I say, the brain of a Megzi, to figure that out, right? But notice again, link in the description bar below for this one. Where's the racism and sexism against Megan? Just asking for a friend, you know? Next up though, December 2016, it is their first Christmas together, you guys. Uh, Megan had just finished filming Suits at that point, uh, but had to wait to see Prince Harry as he was on a two week tour in the Caribbean. After that had been completed, though, he then flew to Toronto to spend time with Meghan instead of travelling straight home. By making this detour, though, you guys, he travelled by plane an extra 1,700 miles out of his way. So, yeah, what a great advocate uh, uh, and uh, protector of the planet. Yeah. I know, right? Let's go green! Unless I really, really want to see Megan and then, you know, I'll travel out on my way 1,700 miles to go see her. Wow, is she really that worth it, dude? Clearly to him it was. So a couple of weeks later after that, Megan flew into London and they go to this store called Pines and Needles in Battersea to pick out a Christmas tree. Now, as reported in Hello Magazine, Spokesperson for the shop said, quote, they came in at about 8.30 p.m. last night. Prince Harry was with Meghan and hilariously, the staff only recognized Meghan at first. They were so excited to have the girl from Suits there. Now, again, link in description bar below. Read this article. Can you find any racism or sexism against Meghan here? 
Again, just asking for a friend because I couldn't. Now, January 2017, a brand new year. And after spending the new year in London, Meghan and Prince Harry went to Norway, traveling to the Arctic Circle to watch the Aurora Borealis light show. It was reported by The Telegraph that they had opted for the privacy of a cabin for their week-long trip and have spent their time on the lake whale watching and enjoying the Norwegian sunsets. Prince Harry's friend, Inga Solheim, was believed to have helped him arrange this holiday. However, Megan, you may want to shut your ear holes for this one because uh, apparently this wasn't the first time that Inga had helped Prince Harry with this kind of holiday and getting it sorted out because it was reported back in 2014 that Inga had helped Prince Harry arrange a similar holiday for his then-girlfriend, Cressida Bonus. Oh, yeah. Now, again, this article, link in description below, I ask again, can you find any racism or sexism against Meghan in there? February 2017, this is their first Valentine's together. Uh, after visiting ambulance crews as part of his mental health campaign he had going on at the time, Prince Harry was pictured with Meghan Markle on a night out at Soho House in London. The coverage here again, though, is favourable, where the first paragraph states, Doting Prince Harry took girlfriend Meghan Markle by the hand this week as they walked down a busy London street after a dinner date. And their wish for privacy, to me, went completely out of the window when the following was reported. Quote, they tried to keep as low-key as possible and were sitting in a small, snug area of the restaurant. But it wasn't a private area, and they were happy to be seen. Hey, full disclosure, guys. Another link in the description down below for this particular article. Read it. Can you find any racism or sexism against Megzi here? Then March 2017 comes along and Prince Harry and Meghan attend the wedding of his best friend, Tom Inskip, otherwise known as Skippy, in Montego Bay in Jamaica. Uh, Prince Harry was his usher and in this article it was apparently speculated by the guests whether Harry was next to be married to Meghan Markle because they were apparently being proper, like, affectionate to each other and all that malarkey. Uh, now, in this article, it was reported that Meghan had worn a dress by Erdem at a cost of £1,200 and teamed it with £249 worth of Dior sunglasses and a nude clutch bag. The link is in the description bar below for this article. Read it. Can you find any racism or sexism against Meghan Markle here? Again, just asking for another friend. I've got quite a few friends, guys. Just bear with me on this one, all right? Now, on the 6th of May 2017, Meghan Markle attended a high-profile polo match in Ascot where Prince Harry was competing in support of Well Child and Centre Barley. Uh, it was reported that Prince William was also at the game as well. Even though, on the next part, she wasn't invited to the church ceremony, Meghan also then, that same month, attended Pippa Middleton's wedding reception afterwards at the Middleton family home. Now. This article here that I'm showing you, link in the description below. Can you find any racism or sexism against our Megsa here? Again, asking for another friend, guys. Now, to celebrate Megsy's 36th birthday, Prince Harry took her back to Africa a year later, uh, to Botswana and Zambia. Described as a romantic trip, it was reported that he was taking her to one of the seven natural wonders of the world. Nope. Not Yorkshire, guys, but Victoria Falls. Now, again, this article here, link in the description bar below. I challenge you, can you find any racism or sexism against our Megzi in that article as well? I can't. Just a hint. Now, for the first time the following month later, the Vanity Fair magazine uh, comes out. And this is when, for the first time, Meghan sp speaks openly about her relationship with Prince Harry, saying, quote, with two people who are really happy and in love. Now, notice how Vanity Fair starts off by saying, battered by the tabloids. But all the way through, I have been giving you example after example where um, that's not really been the case, you guys. It's the first time she publicly speaks about Prince Harry. 
Of course they're going to lead with that. Come the frick on. However, years later, it's reported that she tries to spin this by saying that the headline was racist. Like, really? The first time she's speaking out in regards to her relationship with Prince Harry, that's of course what they're going to lead with. That's of course going to be their headline for the front page, right? And then years later, she tries to spin it and it's like, oh, it's racist. It's racist. Um, I'm sorry, but come again. That same month, towards the end of September, Meghan Markle attends the Invictus Games in Toronto to support her then-boyfriend, Prince Harry. She was seated away from him, though, uh, but she wasn't alone. She was in the Air Canada box with a friend at the time, Jessica Mulroney, which, again, where is she? Asking for a friend. And her mother and a dude called Marcus Anderson. It was reported that during his time there, he surprised Meghan on the set of Suits, where a source told Hello Magazine he's incredibly supportive of her work. Meghan showed him around set. Everyone was so excited. Again, this article here. Read it. Link in description. Do you find any racism or sexism against Meghan Markle here? I don't. But, yeah. He then put a ring on it in the end. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, the title of this article pretty much says it all. Megzi got Prince Azza to go down on one knee and propose to her. And, of course, she was going to say yeah. Like, like hell, she was going to turn around and say no. Maybe she might have said no if the ring wasn't big enough or the diamond wasn't big enough. You know what I mean? But, yeah. That slim chance she was going to say no to her prince. I mean, come on, right? Now, the more interesting part, though, of this article from The Independent is how it further tries to early on play on their victim narrative, okay? Describing the, quote, racial undertones of the media coverage about Meghan and how she's been subject to a wave of abuse and harassment. Sorry, I've got to be very careful because, again, trigger word, guys, all right? However, all the article links that I've provided to you so far in the description bar below, yeah? You cannot find one example of any racism, sexism, ABUSE, or harassment against her. So what the douche, right? What the deuce, Independent? What are you chatting shiz for? Come on! Now, shortly after the announcement of their engagement, Prince Harry and Meghan carry out their first official royal engagement together in a city called Nottingham. Now, wanting to introduce Meghan more to the UK public, he also took her on day trips to Edinburgh, Belfast, Cardiff and Birmingham. Completely missing out Yorkshire, just to point that out, okay? But in this article from The Guardian, it was reported that, quote, crowds keen to catch a first glimpse of the American actor and fledgling royal. With so many quoted as saying extremely complimentary things about Meghan, right? Read the article. Link in the description below. Do you see any racism or sexism in this? Or harassment? Or ABUSE? I mean, come on. It's getting ridiculous, guys, right? Now, it was announced uh, for December 2017 that Meghan Markle was being invited to spend Christmas time with the royal family at Sandringham. At this point, she was engaged to Prince Harry. So you might think, okay, so what? They're engaged. They're going to get married. Yeah, she's going to get invited, right? Wrong! This was the first time that the late Queen Elizabeth II had allowed an unmarried partner to attend Christmas with them. Everyone else, including Princess Catherine, had to wait until they were married in order to get this invite, yeah? An example of the royal family here bending over backwards to make Megsy welcome. Also, read the full article to this. Link in the description bar below. Can you find any racism, sexism, ABUSE, or harassment against our Megsy here? I can't. Now, 
The following year, in February, this was when Prince William, Princess Catherine, Prince Harry and Meghan carried out their first official engagement together as a foursome at the Royal Foundation Forum in central London. It was confirmed at the same time that after her wedding to Prince Harry, she would become the foundation's fourth patron. The media were in and so complimentary towards Meghan as she stole the show with her example on shining a light on the hashtag Me Too and the hashtag Time's Up movements that were gaining pace at the time. Now, culturally, what she was saying about all of this was actually quite a radical statement for Meghan to say and do because politically, and this is the thing here, the royal family in the UK have to be seen as completely neutral. So for her to well, publicly speak out about this was an absolute radical moment. And so many people, and we did as well, we applauded her for that. Absolutely applauded her for that. We thought, brilliant. Another example of the monarchy going in the step in the right direction to modernization. We were all thumbs up for it. Now, again, link in the description bar below of this article. Do you see any racism, sexism, ABUSE, or harassment against Megzi in this article? Asking for a friend, guys. Asking for a friend. And then, ding, 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 ding. Yes, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle get married at St. George's Chapel. Megzi wore a custom satin boat neck wedding gown designed by Claire Waite Keller of Givenchy and wore the Queen Mary's diamond bandu tiara. So, from meeting to getting married, how did Opinion Conspiracy Theory whatever Meghan Markle fool our Prince Azza into marrying her? Well, what did we learn from the timeline, okay, that we've just gone through? Well, firstly, it helps if you know someone who knows Prince Harry. It really does. Oh, always say yes, guys, if he invites you to camp in Africa. Always say yes. Start early on as well painting yourself as a damsel in distress, you guys. A victim to the media. That a strong prince needs to save you from. Yes, you need a hero. You need a prince in shining armor to save you from the ghouls. That's the media, right? Mm. Make sure you're his plus ones to weddings, polo matches, and, and, and any other event that he's going to be attending. Talk about it in a minute view. But then afterwards, scream racism. Well, fair, you you got to do it after, not before, but after, guys, apparently. Make sure your first Valentine's outing is captured by the press. Even though you want your privacy, guys, you still got to make sure your first Valentine's is documented publicly. Oh, and put into practice being a royal so you can prove that you can hack it for when the real thing starts after you get married. But then after you get married, it all falls apart and you can't hack it. Oh, well, at that point, you're married. He's trapped, right? Da, da, da. So, you guys, enough with my gob. It's now time for your gobs. If you appreciated this video and you want more, and believe me, ooh, there is going to be more, uh, do make sure you click on that subscribe button. You will not want to miss a couple of weeks' time. I will be reporting live in London from the coronation. You definitely don't want to miss out on that. Like, share, share. Comment down below your opinion, conspiracy theories and whatevers. Also as well, do send me a super thanks. It's just below this video right here. Let's have a conversation about what we've discussed because it does guarantee a response from me. And until the next time, you guys. Later.